there, amigos. I'm Nat, and today's simply not a wine glass day for me. But when I am feeling extra civilized, like I want to use one, I pair it with great conversation. Cue Dan Bonanno at a pig in a fur coat in Madison, who encourages the drinking of wine and the tasting of savory food. You can drink the wine too. The oh no, I plan on it. Okay. <laughs> First memory that you have of cooking, personally. So when I was almost two years old, it was my brother's third birthday. My dad was making Italian sausage for his party. I was helping him. I stuck my finger in the wrong end of the meat grinder and I cut off the tip of my finger. Which one? Right, this one. Fast forward. I know that you did spend some time in Florence. Yep. What, about a year? Yep. Do you know how to speak Italian? A little bit. Did your parents teach you or did you learn there by necessity? Um, the default, my parents, they, my mom speaks proper Italian. Okay. But they grew up in Southern Italy and very strong dialect. Okay. So you get like, you, know, you want like the Sopranos, you hear them talk. Tony Capogol, grandma, something but fat and nitrates. Capogol. Over here. They're not really speaking Italian. <laughs> um, but like, it kind of sounds like that. So when I went to Italy, I would speak dialect and people would just look at me like I'm crazy. Like you're crazy, but, like you're doing it wrong or why the hell are you up here from your a, father? A little bit of both. Okay. So I worked at one restaurant and the owner was like, whoa, are you Calabrian? I'm like my parents, he's like, oh, like my, I'm Calabrian. So like we like connected like that. And he's like, I haven't, like, nobody speaks like that. I'm like, oh, one of the benefits for, for not speaking too much Italian, I just watch people a lot. Okay. I just watch and just, like, try to figure out how they made something or why they did it. Sometimes, like, some people don't want to tell you the secrets, but the secret is actually, if you watch it, they'll tell you the secret without even saying anything. So that's kind of like what I... It's a little work. It's a little bit more work. You just give it to yourself. You don't yeah. tell them, hey, I know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Do you have some melancholy nostalgia for that time in your life? Yeah, just like missing going to the market. Um, a lot of uh, friends I made there, a lot of teachers, a lot of chefs, just hanging out with them, learning from them. I learned how, really how to cook when I was in Italy. And I learned how to run a restaurant when I moved to Chicago. Just how to talk to people, how to conduct myself. Not being a dad? Yeah. Okay, not being a bossy boss? Yeah. Was there a... Oh, what did I get myself into moment? Ever? Um, no. I think that moment was before we opened. Okay. I think before you're open, where you're not getting any revenue in, you're just keep spending, spending, and the city tells you you need to move the bathroom, you need an architect to do this and do that, and it just costs so much debt, it's like, we're never gonna open. But once you're open, once I opened here, I never had that feeling that we are gonna fail or why I did this. Very rarely we get people like, oh, we're just driving past. Well, is it fair to say you're kind of discreet on the outside as well? You got to know it. You yes, got to know what you're doing. Uh, also, it's more of a money thing when we first opened. We didn't you want made like it cool though. Yeah, yeah. We <laughs> when we first opened, we were like, you know, yeah. where could we, you know, we had X amount of money. Yeah. And we wanted to put it in the building because we did all the work ourselves. The city wanted us to do like a lot of stuff. Like maybe we don't need a sign right now. Okay. So that was our attitude. Like, oh, we'll do it later. Sure. Well, seven years later, we still never did it. So it was kind of like... <laughs> what? This is us. Yeah, right? it's okay. Yeah, whatever. Own it. And we don't need it now. So, can I throw a knife at them? Uh, do you have two knives? I'll do one too. Yeah, hey. This won't go on for another hour, I promise. I'm just a curious lady. I like it so far, so it's good. Oh, good. There's something like personal. Like, I, you come to eat my antelope. Maybe the guy next door makes antelope. I don't know. It's going to be different from mine because this is like my dish. It's something that I came up with that I really love, enjoy eating. Is yours better? Probably. Probably. Yeah. I figured that. Yeah. My food's always better. Do you read your Yelp reviews? No. Is <laughs> there a reason? Um, They're pretty good. <laughs> are they? Um, They're great. I don't have the time. Okay. Nor do I want to like, if I do have the time, it's usually before I go to bed and that's kind of a really, not a good time to get your butt blo boiling, you know, before you go to bed. If it didn't taste good, like, there's no point for me sending it out. This is like the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Like here's something that people come in and they're, say they're allergic to something sure. halfway through the meal. No. Yeah, so that happens. Like, it's like, oh, I'm allergic to nuts. I'm like, well, you just ate. You're going to die. Yeah. Maybe. So, so there's always stuff like that. Any parting words on anything coming up here at a pig in a fur coat? My crew has been here for a while, so we've been, they're learning. So now their ideas are 
are coming ahead too. So they is that accepted? Yeah. Cool. You know, um, so I'm really excited because then, then you know we can have more of a a team menu. Thank Cheers. You. Thanks for coming.